Kansas City Chiefs at the Baltimore Ravens. Ravens are favored by three and a half as of right now. This is going to be your three o'clock game on Sunday afternoon. Uh, Ravens, as you, I think you mentioned on the other show, first time Baltimore has hosted an AFC championship, the city of Baltimore, since like 1970. Um, Chiefs, a sixth straight AFC championship, first on the road. Of course, Mahomes and the Chiefs, their first road win of the Mahomes era last week in the playoffs um, against Josh Allen and the Bills, going up against the Ravens, who uh, took care of the Houston Texans pretty easily in the divisional round. They did, very easily, in fact. Um, I, At least I, in the second half. Right. Uh Light rain, another light rain forecast. Remember, the 49ers game was supposedly light rain, and then that became an absolute downpour, which materially affected the game. Um, So that's something to keep an eye on generally for this game. The biggest thing, though, I think is, look, the Chiefs offense has looked like the Chiefs offense the most in the last couple of weeks. Now, was that, hey, it's playoff Mahomes, and we know playoff Mahomes is a different animal. As soon as you get to crunch time, that's when everybody turns it on. And the Chiefs are just going to be the Chiefs, roll back to the Super Bowl, win another one, and on with the dynasty. Or did they simply have the good fortune of running up against a team that ran out of edge rushers and started signing them off the street? And then the next week, ran up against a team that ran out of linebackers. And for some reason, we're like, AJ Klein, you need to go back in there. I don't care if you just hurt yourself. We have nobody left. On you go. A.J. Klein in the last five years has averaged a PFF grade in the 40s. I think it's like 45, 44.8, something like that. Uh, And apparently he was the best option they had. They were down at least three starting caliber linebackers, if you count sort of what they've gone through in the depth chart. That's before you factor in that they, you know, let Tremaine Edmonds walk in the offseason. So what I'm saying is we don't yet know if Kansas City's revival on offense is real or if it's product of running up against a couple of defenses that were absolutely beat up right before they ran into them. Baltimore, neither of those things is true. They have a formidable pass rush. They've got seven guys with more than 20 pressures on the season. They can get after the quarterback. And the strength of the defense is arguably the area where Buffalo were weakest. They've got multiple athletic linebackers. They've got a matchup weapon in Kyle Hamilton. You know, they have the best pass defense in the NFL by a bunch of different statistics. So minimum, the difficulty level is being ramped way up, even if the revival was real. And if the the revival wasn't real, you're going from one end of the spectrum to the other in terms of what that's likely to look like. I think you did a great job of setting that up, Sam, of describing, you you know, where we are here. Because I think think there's kernels of truth in both things. I think the Chiefs offense that has been the – not the weakness of the team with the Chiefs, but certainly well below standard this year. And and that's been because of drops and inconsistency at receiver and untimely turnovers. And Mahomes didn't play his best ball this year in, in addition to not having a lot of help outside. And then all of a sudden in the playoffs, I think two things happened, right? They did run into favorable matchups that they took advantage of, uh, beat up Bills and beat up Dolphins teams. And then Mahomes, I think, again, I think his superpower is not so much the special plays it, you know the highlight reel at the end of Mahomes' career is going to be out of this world right you're gonna you're gonna run through all of his best plays and be like wow that was amazing but i think his superpower is not making mistakes and not missing and i know he missed a couple touchdowns he did miss a couple um in the buffalo game which also shows just how open everything was right i mean the fact that Mahomes went like 17 of 23 and a couple of two three or four of his incompletions were open as well i mean he, they they should have had maybe even more offensively at the Chiefs, but Mahomes doesn't make a ton of mistakes from a turnover perspective or just like a missing open throws perspective. Well, also, again, is playoff Mahomes real or is it not, right? Playoff Mahomes has a turnover-worthy play rate of 1.7% for his career. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Like, that's absurd. The last year, remember, hobbled Mahomes, could not move last season. Like, literally, if it wasn't the playoffs, there's no, no chance he would have been playing these games. Uh, that season and this season, so two games, Miami Buffalo combined one turnover worthy play. And that was the ball that slipped out of his hand in the AFC Championship right. against the Bengals. He so, played a really clean football. Basically, almost two complete playoff runs at this point with one turnover worthy play. That's insane. That's I what, mean, that's completely absurd and unrealistic. And yet, based off a, a career in which his playoff uh, turnover the play rate is 1.7%, which is basically a league-leading figure for a regular season. He's done that in the playoffs now over what is amounting to 
like a full season's worth of play. I was trying to, I was thinking about this the other day. I think his production profile, not stylistically, the production profile kind of resembles like a Drew Brees. It's, it's high volume. It's, a, it's actually a lot of short passes. It's a lot of underneath stuff. And then now Mahomes' game is more opportunistic downfield passes. Last week was the best downfield passing attack the Chiefs have had where, he, you know, they, I think they had three or four completions on 20 plus yard throws. They, you know, Mahomes had been horrible this season, statistically, throwing the ball down the field. His statistical or production profile more resembles a Breeze, who was always among the league leaders in avoiding just negatively graded plays. He would just, he would just hit all the stuff he was supposed to hit, and then he was also efficient throwing the ball down the field. Um, obviously, stylistically, Mahomes and Breeze are different, but I think that's what we're seeing from him. And so I, I think the playoff Chiefs do bring this level of focus and calm and Andy Reid – like Andy Reid just being in there like, oh, the Bills don't have linebackers? We're going to – we know the run plays that are going to work there. Their run game was incredible last week. We're going to attack A.J. Klein directly with Travis Kelsey. We will isolate those guys in week one with the Dolphins. We know where their weaknesses are. I think all of that combined leads to the Chiefs, in not their best season right now, unable to have a team like the Bills even capitalize on the home field advantage, and the Chiefs are sitting here in the AFC Championship again. So all that said, that's what makes this matchup so great because the Ravens' defense has been good pretty much start to finish this year. Um, I think there's ways to look at the numbers, EPA per play and points per game, and say they're one of the better defenses over the last couple of years. I don't know if that's what they really are, but they do just make life difficult. And I think the open throws, I think the windows are just going to be a little bit tighter. Unless Andy Reid's in his bag again, I think the windows are going to be tighter for this Chiefs offense. And if the Chiefs get through this offensively, then, man, a spectacular run by them because this is a challenge going up against Baltimore. It really is. I mean, overall defense, I think we can – it's debatable how good they are relative to, you know, historical teams. But pass defense in particular, these are the two best pass defenses in the NFL this season. Yeah. Like Baltimore and Kansas City won two. When you look at what the Ravens have done, particularly in the passing game to opposing – quarterbacks to opposing teams it's been formidable I mean the the Texans last week CJ Stroud Bobby Slowick those guys were fresh off absolutely eviscerating the Cleveland Browns defense which itself was pretty good um they annihilated them they had them absolutely on the ropes the entire game they couldn't get anything going against Baltimore like if they're a that I mean that's a huge challenge so CJ Stroud was incredible this year but a rookie Bobby Slowick, uh, you know, a rookie offensive coordinator. Now you're going up against seasoned veterans playing at a higher level than either one of those guys, I think. Like Andy Reid doing what he does, and then obviously Patrick Mahomes versus C.J. Stroud. Again, the difficulty level for the Ravens' defense is going way up as well. Mike McDonald, their defensive coordinator, has done an incredible job this season against some really, really good offenses. But now you're going up against this group. And... You know, if you start looking at playoff Patrick Mahomes, um, we are talking almost 600, or sorry, over 600 dropbacks, almost 600 pass attempts now in his playoff career because he's been there so many times. His numbers are getting ridiculous. Like, he's passed for 4,500 yards, more than, 7.8 yards per attempt, 38 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, with, as we said, a turnover-worthy play rate of just 1.7% and just a completion rate a hair under 80%. Remember, most of these games are outside in the freezing-ass cold in Kansas City. Um, they're not like optimal passing conditions. And then you had another run where he couldn't move. We were talking about if he's playing at this level, like it's you actually need his receivers to let him down in order for you to have any shot of stopping it. Because, and even last week, like you need... Mecole Hardman fumbling over the goal line for it to be a thing, right? Like, the, if Mahomes plays at this level, which he's now done for, you know, half a dozen seasons, if he plays at this level, you need other players around him to screw it up because he's not. Like, he isn't giving you the opportunities, even if you just, oh, capitalize on the mistakes he makes. He's not making enough mistakes for you to capitalize for it to mean anything. You actually need Mecole Hardman to fumble the ball. You need... Kadarius Tony to jump offside. You need Travis Kelsey to drop a couple of passes. You need all the other players around him to screw up because he's not screwing up enough. Yeah, I mean, Mahomes, his, his worst games in the playoffs have been two of the Super Bowls. 
I think his Super Bowl against the Niners wasn't great outside of the right. couple throws and the comeback attempt, and then, of course, against the Bucs. Which, and that even that Bucks game relied on just the sheer overwhelming of that offensive line. Like, they just got too many injuries, and it became too big of a problem. The, but um, In the Chiefs last week, did play a clean game. The Hardman thing, of course, look, they were – it goes both ways, right? They were they were gifted the ball in Buffalo sure. territory, and then Hardman also gave it away. They had played a really clean game. They weren't really dropping passes. They didn't have penalties. Uh, Valdez Scantling caught the two passes thrown his way. They were both deep balls, right? That was like last year. Valdez Scantling, two catches, sixty something yards. If they play like that, they're tough to beat. I don't whether it's the Ravens or not. Um, so yeah, if if the Chiefs play a clean game like they did last week offensively, they were not really stopped by Buffalo. Mm-hmm. Only one or two drives, maybe, because they had a couple, you know, drives that finished in kneels, the Hardman one. Um, but as an offense, they were moving the ball effectively and efficiently. And again, they were doing it on the ground as well. Um, injury-wise, Joe Tooney's going to be out at left guard. Uh, Nick Allegretti will, who's a good backup. He's a good, solid, you know, uh, guy who can play tackle, guy who can play guard type of backup. Um, I don't think that we're looking at this disastrous situation like we did in the Super Bowl in 2020. But again, you've got Just, Justin Matabike. He's had a monster year as far as sacking the quarterback, rushing the passer, playing the run. Uh, Michael Pierce, Travis Jones, those guys are tough up front. I mean, when you look at the Ravens' depth chart defensively, it's not even that they have a ton of stars. I think Kyle Hamilton is a star in the making with what he's capable of doing, lining up in the slot, playing free safety. But they're not a bunch of stars. It's just a whole bunch of PFF green on this defense everybody's good everybody's solid i think roquan smith i think uh on off splits are sometimes noisy but the the data since they traded for roquan smith in the middle of 2022 that's the best defense in the nfl by a wide margin roquan has helped that a lot so that's going to be the challenge i think for the chiefs offense and what the ravens defense can do to I, i think they'll have a chance to slow down this chiefs offense at least certainly better than the dolphins and bills did that's the thing. Like that's the that's what it comes down to is okay, we don't really know yet. It's it's theoretically it's good on good if the Chiefs offense is back in its stride, if Patrick Mahomes is playoff Mahomes, you know, once again. Um, but we've only seen that go against bad so far this season. Not that the Dolphins and the Bills have bad defenses generally, but in those games. I mean Miami Miami signed two 35 plus year old edge rushers four days before the game just so they would have bodies to be out there right Vic Fangio decided that the way the only way he was going to have a prayer in that game was to blitz Patrick Mahomes 58 percent of the time something like that which we know is not a good idea like you don't blitz Patrick Mahomes generally because he carves up the blitz and yet Vic Fangio one of the best minds defensive minds in the game was like it's still the best thing I can do it's not it's not a winning game plan but it's the best one I have available to me because the alternative is we we rely on the, the geriatric bones of Melvin Ingram and Justin Houston and Bruce Irvin to try and get pressure up front, and it's just not going to happen. So I wanted to bring that up too because early in Mahomes' career, he played the Ravens a bunch, and it was when Wink Martindale was still defensive coordinator there, and Wink always blitzes. Yeah, yeah like yeah, that one game where he decided he was going to not blitz, right? It was that one time that he decided – but against Mahomes, who's always killed the blitz. And again, killing the blitz isn't just the quarterback. It's the scheme. It's having sure. outlets. It's having answers. We saw that with the Eagles against the Bucs. They didn't have any answers. The Chiefs, as a whole, have really good blitz answers. Mahomes is awesome at seeing it and recognizing it. And Wink Martindale and the Ravens blitzed him like crazy. And they would get torched yeah. all the time. The Bills defense that didn't blitz, historically, has had better success against Mahomes, at least in the regular season, not in the playoffs. So the teams that sit back at least have a better chance. Now, this isn't the same Ravens scheme, though. When they blitz, it is more calculated. They do a good job of you know bringing rushers when you're not expecting and where you're not expecting it from, and to and they and they break down your protection scheme. And again, I think they, I think they want to pick their spots with Mahomes. But this is a different Ravens team, and it's just fascinating because of Lamar Jackson injuries and just general schedule quirks. These teams haven't played in a few years. Right. We see we see Chiefs Bills every year. We're seeing Chiefs Bengals every year. We're seeing it in the playoffs. We haven't seen this team, these teams ever play in the playoffs, Mahomes Lamar, and they haven't played in the regular season since what, twenty twenty, is it, or twenty one? So it's been a while that we've uh, actually seen these two teams here. The Ravens this year are on the lower end of the blitz scale. They don't blitz very much, twenty eight percent of the time. Um, so 
they have gone completely away from that Wing Martindale style of defense. They are much more designed, I guess, to stop a, a Patrick Mahomes team now. But the point being, you know, he that was how problematic the Dolphins and the Bills were when when they faced the Chiefs. You know, the Dolphins had to change the game plan completely because they didn't have any pass rushers. And Buffalo, I mean, they were trying to run their defense, but their defense with AJ Klein out there covering Travis Kelsey, and it's just yeah. it's just not going to work. So. All you can do if you're Kansas City is beat what's in front of you and exploit what's in front of you. But the things to exploit against Baltimore are a lot less obvious than the things were to exploit against Miami and Buffalo. Ravens offense against this Chiefs defense. Chiefs defense. I mean, I know the the feeling last week was the the Bills were running the ball like crazy. And there were drives where they did that. And um, I don't know how, many, how much people have talked about this, but it did feel like the Bills were beating them up in the trenches. And they were early on, right? They were picking up seven a pop and six a pop. And on second and four, they were picking up four. They were doing what they needed to do from a run game perspective. But there was a point where the Chiefs adjusted. And that's been the story of this Chiefs defense this year. Second half adjustments. And to me, if the Ravens, the the back and forth between the Ravens and the Chiefs on this side of the ball might end up just determining the game. Because the criticism of Greg Roman's offense in Baltimore was a failure to adjust. And Todd Monken comes in, and not only do the Ravens have more answers, they're tapping into those answers. If you're taking away the power run game, they can run horizontally. Lamar can run at any time. They can throw the ball down the field. They can throw short, they can throw intermediate. They have answers. They have different style players that are tough to cover. But the Chiefs' defense has been equally good at second-half adjustments. And there's been a lot of games where the Chiefs have given up 10 or 17 points in the first half. In the second half, it's been nothing. So I think this might be the thing that determines the game. And that comes down to Lamar Jackson, of course, being the X factor. Because I don't care what you come up with on the chalkboard to stop Lamar. You might have all the right number of defensive players in the box to stop the run, whatever it might be. But if he makes one guy miss, the chalkboard becomes wrong. And so that's where I think it's Lamar and Spags going head-to-head here. And in the second half. Right? We're looking at a game, might be 10-10 in the first half, 7-7 in the first half. What's going to happen in the second half here? Ravens offense versus Chiefs defense. Two, def- uh, two sides of the ball that are so good at understanding the game flow and making adjustments. It's a lot like last week, honestly, where, you know, sure, there's how does the run game go overall? How do you match up against those receivers? Can you get pressure? But ultimately, it comes down to the defense, one of the best defenses in the NFL versus Josh Allen, right? And for most of the game, Josh Allen made just enough plays to keep ahead, to keep winning, to keep the Buffalo where they wanted to be. And then right at the end, he made a couple of mistakes. And so so Spags <coughs> wins, right? So Spags gets the, the W at the end. I mean, this is the same thing, except it's Lamar Jackson instead of Josh Allen. Like last week, the, the Ravens rushed for 229 yards against the Texans. Like that was the big difference. The pass game, Texans defense did okay. Uh, the run game, they got wrecked. Lamar Jackson accounted for 100 of those. Right. Like, that's going to be the thing again is, okay, how does Kansas City stop Lamar Jackson? Can he make enough plays basically by himself? Obviously, he's got to throw it to somebody. You know, other people are going to carry the ball. They'll have some success as well. But it really is. It's Spags and that defense overall against Lamar Jackson. I, I said on the Monday show, I think the Bills executed their game plan unbelievably. I think they did. Now, again, there might have been a point where they were running the ball so well that they may have thrown away a couple drives by trying to continue to run on first down, and they should have taken their shot plays earlier. And then when they took their shot plays, you know, Sherfield dropped it, Diggs dropped it. Mm -hmm. But if the Ravens execute the same game plan, or if the game flow goes the same as last week, which was the Chiefs had two first half possessions, and then, but every time the Chiefs had the ball, they basically scored. They at, least, they at least kicked a field goal on every single drive except one, I believe. If the Ravens hold the Chiefs to seven drives in this game, they're going to feel pretty good about that. And they could do it in a similar way, the 14-play drives, the 12-play drives, between their power run game, Lamar picking up what's necessary, and then the ability to just morph. When they do start taking away the run, we can go empty. We can create uh, – we've got the screen game with Zay Flowers. We have – um, the intermediate game. We got Mark Andrews coming back, right? The Ravens should feel good about their weapons. Mm-hmm. 
So I think the Ravens can execute the same game plan ball Buffalo did. And if they do that, run the ball, shorten the game, then it comes down to will the Ravens' defense make more stops than the Bills' defense? Right. And probably yes. Even yeah. if the Chiefs get theirs, you could probably still hold them to maybe 21 points. Right? So I think the Ravens might look at last week and say, man, the Bills, they got to the doorstep. And if we get to the doorstep, we'll be able to, to pull this off. And, it come, and, and so I think the, the Ravens' offense – is equipped to execute that, run the ball, and, and maybe control the game flow again. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's going to be similar to last week. Maybe a lower scoring game, but the idea is going to be the same. It's going to be close. And then it's a case of which guy, which side makes either fewer mistakes or makes, you know, one more big play at the end. Like if Josh Allen gets that touchdown in, instead of getting bumped and missing and then, you know, this the third down play that gets screwed, like maybe the Bills win that game, right? Maybe they go ahead. Maybe they hold the next drive, or we get another Chiefs score and then another Bills score, whatever. But one play might have determined that game going one way or the other way. It's going to be the same this week. Like, Lamar Jackson is going to have an opportunity. Patrick Mahomes is going to have an opportunity. You're going up against two of the best defenses in the NFL, maybe the two best defenses in the NFL, and you're going up against a guy who has been historically amazing in the playoffs and another guy who's probably going to win the MVP. So, like, it doesn't get any better than that as a billing. Elite defense versus one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Not just best, but, like, most difficult to defend. I mean, obviously, Lamar Jackson is probably the most dynamic athlete the game has ever seen at the quarterback position. And then Mahomes, you know, he's never going to get the credit for it. But that guy, is he makes two, three, four plays a game in the playoffs that are with his legs that wreck defenses and even against buffalo i mean what did he gain in that like gain 19 20. yards uh in that game he had a 24 or 26 yard or something like that right because those where he just took off yeah. right and again the defense it, it looked like he was going to pick up a couple of yards and then he just somehow finds keep keeps weaving into the space and always gets more than he's expected to have i think it might be a more uh mahomes relying on his legs type of game i don't think they'll have i think they'll have tighter windows and he'll be more inclined to take off and then it'll be on Jadavian Clowney, Kyle Van Noy, Matabike. I mean, those guys trust in their, staying in their pass rush lanes. Like, even the first pass Mahomes dropped back, Gregory Rousseau was in the backfield. Mahomes just shrugs him off, completes a five-yard pass. That's what I'm talking about, the negative plays that Mahomes doesn't create. He doesn't take sacks, and he doesn't miss a whole lot of throws. So you just have this consistency of the offense. It's not always the explosives. It's just the consistency of not taking negatives Whereas Baltimore is going to have to find a way to force a turnover, to, to have a sack here and there, and then avoid those disastrous you know, scrambles, what, uh, disastrous for the defense, the Mahomes-type scrambles to, to move the chains. Um, Narrative-wise, of course, you know, Mahomes and the Chiefs trying to get to the Super Bowl again. You know, their ability to come out, just look confident, look like they've been there before, and you know, maybe, I'm, maybe that's overblown. And if Josh Allen just hits that one pass down the field, it's like, oh, the Chiefs lost, who cares? But the Chiefs came out, and they've executed pretty well. For two weeks in the playoffs but the Ravens bringing their own level of confidence to the table I told you John Harbaugh was like unbelievably confident at halftime he said Lamar's taken over this team from a leadership standpoint he's on a mission something's got to give here right Mahomes and it's playoff Mahomes against Lamar who's you know he's won games in the playoffs now but still he's trying to be that guy right he's trying to get that first Super Bowl there's a lot on the line here and both teams coming in not only playing well but doing it with a confidence either because the Chiefs, they've done it before, or because the Ravens just been laser focused from start to finish this year. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so. this really exciting game. This is one of the, the big ones. All right, man. Um, just a reminder, too, like conference championship week, the NFL doesn't choose which game goes first or second. They literally just alternate AFC versus NFC. It was the AFC's year to be at 3 o'clock. That's why it's the first game. They don't always say, this game's better. Let's put it in prime time. So it's three. It's the three o'clock game. You mentioned light rain. Shouldn't be too cold. Light rain in Baltimore. Four um, I think I said. Ravens by three and a half. Where are you going to go? Uh, Forty-three in light rain. Um, oh God. I guess I kind of have to go with Kansas City, even though I think Baltimore will win the game. I think Baltimore could win by three. Is the thing, right? Yeah. Uh, by the way, you know, kicking game could be huge in this one. This Tuck, Justin Tucker's time to shine potentially to get to a Super Bowl. Yes. Harrison Butker has been – they've both been fantastic at 50-plus yard field goals. All that stuff's going to matter here. I'll take Kansas City to cover as well. I would not be surprised by a Ravens three-point win, though. I mm. think it'll be 
I think it'll be close. I think it'll be a good game. Can't wait to see it. Game I of think, the week. I think Baltimore ends up winning the game, but the Chiefs, it's close. Yes. I think that's where I'll go as well.